Welcome to the Justin Johnston Show. I'm Justin Johnston. I'm a commercial real estate agent, practicing commercial real estate for the last 27 years. And this is Blake Moore. He's my partner and production manager. And we're discussing and have been discussing a very uh, big topic of people, hey, interest rates are going up. How's that going to affect property values? Yeah. And... You know, I, uh, there's a lot of questions. I, there's a lot being written out there about what is uh, what it's going to do. Some people, oh, it's going to crash the market out or it's going to affect values. Yeah. Um, our projection for 2023 or what we see and what's happening is, uh, and, and to give a little background, what does affect values, right? Obviously, if interest rates are going up, you are going to pay more for your financing for that. Yeah. In a classic role, there is a uh, value of the property. And a lot of times you hear the term cap rate, cap rates, uh, a certain percentage of what the net operating income is. So what is the net operating income? When you say that, what are you referring to exactly? So it, it, it's taking all the gross rents okay. from a property. You've got uh, taxes, insurance, mm -hmm. maintenance, uh, utilities. Yeah. Uh, depending on the lease, Sometimes the, the landlord will pay all of those mm -hmm. and then the tenant will reimburse them on it or they just pay a certain amount. So you take out all the expenses of that is what would be the net operating income. Uh, that generally refers to money before maybe what uh, management, internal okay. management fees would be uh -huh. or uh, replacement reserves on that you're maybe holding in a separate account mm -hmm. that would be there. but. That, that's what the net operating income is. Yeah, so it's basic, So what you're saying is it's basically just like after the majority of expenses are taken out, that's what the net operating income is. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and then how does that relate into the cap rate that you were explaining? Cap rates. So, so cap rates, because interest rates are historically low, mm -hmm. right? And we're talking 1%, 2%. Yeah. What the 10-year treasury, almost everything in commercial real estate, almost all lending is based somewhere in what the base of what the 10-year treasury is at. Mm -hmm. um, it's gone up several percentage, and it's kind of gone up, gone back down. We're about 3.5% 10-year treasury right now. Yeah. Well, if it goes up 2%, that obviously is going to affect. And with that, lenders are concerned about value. You yeah. Know, what is the value of it? What, what, what is it that we're going to lend 70%, 60% on what value, right? The mm -hmm. value there was before, is it affecting the value because you can't borrow as much? These things are uh, what everybody's discussing. How's it going to play out in 2023? Um, cap rates. Because we say cap rates, here's, here's what it would be. Here would be a scenario of financing and how you normally would come to cap rates. Uh -huh. Interest rates, 3.5%. Prime would be a point or two above that. So what exactly is prime? Well, prime is what would be the lending rate that the, the banks or lenders would issue. So that's what the, that's basically what the consumer is. That's what the consumer rate yep. is. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So three and a half percent, maybe a really good property and or a really good uh, qualified lender or mm -hmm. a buyer, borrower would get a rate Four and a half, somewhere between four and a half and five percent. Yeah, depending on the quality. And that's what it is right now. That's what it would be right now. Yeah. And uh, well, that's where some of the cap rates have been because they were priced at the interest rates are going up. Um, people are saying, well, you got, you can't have a lower cap rate, which yeah. is a, a percentage of uh, cap rate uh, four and a half percent. That that's what it is. It's not the return you would get on it, but mm -hmm. it's a quick valuation that anybody can say, I'm going to look at the net operating income. It's 100000 or excuse me, net operating income, what the value would be, you take that 4.5% divided by that net operating income. Mm -hmm. Quick and easy figures, net operating income of uh, 100000 at a 10 cap would be a million dollars. Yeah. Right? Factor that into whatever the cap rates are out there. And so if you've got a cap rate that has been trading at 5%, a 5% cap rate, mm -hmm. and you're going to get a loan at 5.5%, <laughs> you've got a negative amortization there of, of, of financing. Yeah. So it, 
there's got to be some type of a spread. Now, people that are at, buying properties right now where that's affected them, it's definitely uh, an issue, but they're saying, hey, uh, let's say industrial, multifamily, they're still really strong out there. So it's going to impact some of the property values out there. There's no doubt about it. There's going to be some trading. I don't think it will be as significant because I think the inflation and all the concerns of why interest rates have been going up are going to come down. Yeah. You know, everybody's going to come back to reality uh, with this. Uh, we're going to cool the economy down a bit, hopefully not too much. But in that process, uh, yeah, cap rates are probably going to go up a little bit. Um, maybe interest rates will come down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so there will not be the huge spread that people are worried about in yeah. the market right there. So you think that... So how, how do you think all of that will affect the property value? Do you think that's going to make it go up or do you think it's going to kind of even out level off during 2023 I see it leveling off maybe a slight de decrease in 2023 okay. is what i see i mean i don't know how yeah. you have some type of a spread where the overall correction i think the concern of what i'm seeing written out there in the market from lots of different angles owners brokers uh, investors analysis there everybody's trying to take a shot and and I, they're taking good there's a good conversation out there, but I think some people are worried that if we squeeze the uh, economy down too much, yeah, we go into recession, it's it's going to uh, just affect what people are wanting to do out there. Um, I, I think where we've had some inflation, I think it, it, it will bring that back in. Right? Yeah. So I think even on a little extreme, I don't see it changing that much. That's my take on it. Uh -huh. Is that property values will... Maybe, maybe go down a little bit. But basically stay the same. Stay the same. So if you're looking at it on a graph, it's going to be yeah. uh, a blip, you know, only to maybe respond and come back. Um, there's definitely a need out there for some of those. Um, people are moving in <laughs> yeah. to the United States at a, a rapid pace still. And, and uh, there's a need for all real estate classes out there. Mm. Some are in, in conversion, but industrial, multifamily, definitely. Um, I, I see maybe a blip of coming down. And then uh, I think we'll see the uh, uh, rebound from there, hopefully. Um, but not, I think the key point is that it's not going to be slaughtered in uh -huh. the marketplace. So do you think that since, since you said that property values will remain about the same, maybe go down a little bit, is 2023 a good time to maybe invest in some property? Or is it time to hold off because interest rates are high so the monthly payment's going to be more or since that might bring the values down is now a good time to maybe pick up some stuff uh, you know i think uh for what my clients and investors and people are looking at doing is that they see this as an opportunity mm -hmm. to buy those asset classes for sure yeah. now if that's the case my belief is that there's asset classes out there. If, if office is in trouble a little bit, people aren't going back to work, we're not pulling that, there might be some good opportunities there too, yeah. right? To either convert, conversion, recalibrate that property. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think what 2023 would be is a good opportunity to maybe be a little more uh, selective in the investment, but I think there's gonna be great opportunity in 2023. Uh, the one area that I see slowing down is probably the new construction, new build. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, industrial, multifamily added, yeah. and, and, and some of those projects are still just beginning. Um, I think that the new construction will be affected. There's no doubt about that. I think that um, uh, lenders are hesitant uh, to lend on that product, on, on any new development. I think yeah. they, they get worried for lots of good reasons, but I think uh, in some markets, uh, it'll probably hurt them. I mean, they, they, I yeah. think we could continue to expand. Having said that, um, your, to answer your question, I think it's going to be a great time to, to be a little more selective, but I think there's yeah. going to be some really good opportunities. Maybe some of those developers, they're investors, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of maybe buying the ground, developing the buildings, 2023 will be a year of maybe acquisition of some assets that maybe you're struggling. Um, you know, there's always something being mismanaged and opportunities.